and welcome everybody to our bonus feature segment. First thing we're looking at are GPS errors with the total electron content forecast. The CTIPE, the coupled thermosphere, ionosphere, plasmasphere, electrodynamics, total electron content, the electrons between your handset and your GPS satellite, which is located at about 12 and a half thousand miles of altitude, can cause GPS errors. They usually happen around the equator at noon. People that live around the equator are aware of this. And let us know your location in the comments. Where are you located? We're located in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Anyway, those are the most likely spots for GPS errors. And again, that is the total electron content in between your GPS satellite and your handset. It must communicate through a couple of plasma spheres, the ionosphere and the Van Allen belt, the inner Van Allen belt. So we don't see any charging hazards at the moment. That's a good thing. Here's the one-year chart of the electron flux reaching more moderate levels here. That's from Solon.info. Here's the three-day chart, and you can see we're seeing sort of moderate levels here, just in the, in the normal operating range there. Fairly unremarkable for the GOES electron flux. Here's the forecast model. And actually, my forecast was right on today. If you watched yesterday's video, I forecasted it very close to that spot. It has to do with understanding the physics, perhaps. That's my theory. I'm sticking to it. Next, look, looking at the ionosphere, the F layer is located at about 300 kilometers of altitude. Here's one slice of the ionosphere, the F layer. This is the layer where the GO-16 and 17 make their measurements for electron flux, by the way. They use radiography from their geosynchronous near equatorial orbits. This is the previous day in vibrational frequency. If you're not familiar with this, we'll show the anomaly gram, the departure, the anomaly from the 30-day median. Once that plays through one more time, for your viewing pleasure. Yes. So here's the anomaly gram. We're seeing some low-frequency anomalies there around northern South America and the Antarctic region. So those areas shown in red. Those are low-frequency anomalies as per the 30-day median. Remember, folks, March is the second most geomagnetically active month. So let's let this play through. We'll bring up the latest image from the anomaly gram and ionogram. There's the ionogram from 1315 Universal Time, and there is the anomaly gram. Continuing on to ground-based solar observatories, and the latest is coming from Cerro Tololo, Spain, uh, Cerro Tololo Chile. There we go, the South American National Sunspot Observatory hydrogen alpha imagery there from the ground-based solar, from the ground-based telescope. A lot of filaments. Don't be surprised to see some coronal mass ejections that are Earth-directed. We've got a ton of filaments, all those dark regions there, as well as these prominences where filaments extend over the edge, over the limb of the sun. Next bonus feature is the latest intensity gram and latest Colorized magnetogram. Sunspot 2946 is certainly capable of producing large flares. It's got a huge amount of distance between those umbrae. There's an alpha class sunspot, and here's 2971. Looking weak, like it's degrading. I still think there's going to be a sunspot in the southern hemisphere. Look for that happening today, perhaps. There is a little bit of magnetic organization happening down there, but most of the activity at the moment is in the north. So there's 2971 looking very degraded. I don't remember the number of this sunspot. It is still a sunspot. It's alpha class, and there's the monstrous sunspot 2946. Quite spectacular indeed. Let's rock it back. There's the intensity gram and colorized magnetogram. couple more animated images of the closest star for you here. This is the NASA GO-16 SUVI, one of our favorites on the channel. We stream it regularly to Twitch, where this video was originally streamed live to. Again, don't be surprised to see earthly directed coronal mass ejections. You can see a huge filament here, and I think there is a sunspot about to appear in this area. I've seen some weird anomalies in the magnetic data. I'll just leave it there. Heavy metal star, we're showing the heavy metal aspects of it here because 1600 angstroms is ionized carbon. 
So in the realm of cosmology, folks, everything heavier on the periodic chart than helium is considered a metal. And it all has to do with the concordance model of stellar evolution. We won't talk about it in the daily space weather content in our bonus features segment. But this is ionized carbon and iron together. So there is a very rich chemical environment around sunspot 2946, as you can see. And we'll close out with 171 angstroms by itself. It's a very bright and sunny golden colored artificial colored spectra there. That's part of the ultraviolet, the extreme ultraviolet spectrum of light. And we like to cast light on the shady situation or situations that may be going on on planet Earth. We're doing our part to Mensa, make Earth not suck again. Thanks for tuning in. We consider you to be doing your part in making Earth not suck again by pressing like, subscribe, etc. Cheers. Congratulations on realizing that the channel exists. And may that solar wind be at your back. Opinions expressed in this bonus feature segment, not necessarily the opinions of Smash News Network's busted name in news.